uh, welcome everyone. Uh, we wanted to continue with our topic of Ukraine. You might recall that we had Evgenia Gukina uh, here a few, few days or a few weeks ago who talked about Kharkov architecture with, in context of the war. And now we have uh, another specialist on Ukrainian architecture, specialist on postural modernism, Alex Dikov, who will be here with us for three three lectures. And this is the first one. I'm very happy that you came and you came uh, talk about Ukrainian architecture. I will give the floor to you. Thank you. Thank you too. Nice to meet you. And uh, I'm really honored to, to be here to have a talk and to tell you in these difficult times more about uh, architectural heritage of Ukraine that unfortunately is uh, also not safety nowadays uh, but we believe that everything will be fine and we will win so uh, my name is Alex Bikov I am an architect uh, and um, uh, I have my own practice and I also kind of research architect, scientific architect, so I divided my professional uh, work 50-50. And my uh, research project, uh, projects are uh, connected with my practice and my practice is connected with my research projects. Uh, because, um, you know, when I finished uh, studies at Kyiv uh, Architectural Faculty of Kyiv uh, University of Construction and Architecture, it was 2008, and it was a worldwide economic crisis, and it also was uh, in Ukraine, and it was huge. So after finishing uh, study, uh, my generation, we can't enter any uh, office that uh, will be attractive for us because there was no work, no projects, and you can enter only some, uh, I don't know, rather strange and not architectural in the point of view offices. So we don't like, we, we won't like to do this. So each of us trying to find uh, themselves in another multidisciplinary connection with architecture. And uh, I don't know exactly why, but I started to interest in, in uh, theory of architecture and the history of architecture, and mostly because uh, you know uh, this architecture of post-war period is uh, surrounding us in Kiev because after the Second World War, Kiev was uh, destroyed a lot, and then after Stalinist era. There was uh, 30 years uh, of uh, modernism project of Kyiv. And in Kyiv, we are living around this architecture, but also during my studies at the faculty, I didn't get, uh, from my opinion, uh, too much information about this period of architecture, uh, of history of architecture. Because it was too short, and it was uh, not so interesting, there was not too much information, but I want to know more and more. Uh, so I decided to do it by myself. And now I will tell you like the old skittle of uh, my research process uh, of uh, edu education of myself. So uh, as you know, uh, this period that is called Soviet modernism, but it's also the question how to call it, uh, because Soviet and modernism is uh, also not connectable, maybe, somehow, but uh, we can call it uh, after-war modernism uh, or modernism of the second wave uh, or Soviet modernism or post-war modernism and so on. So uh, it started uh, from the 1955 uh, with the decree of Khrushchev of struggling against the decoration and putting uh, uh, all production of mass housing and making uh, engineers and builders number one in the process of uh, architecture. And, uh, but there is also the question where this period ended. Uh, because uh, there is uh, 
For example, Felix Novikov, uh, it's like uh, one of star architects of this period, Moscow-based, he's still alive. So uh, he uh, thinking that uh, this uh, period ended in the 1985 with uh, the Gorbachev's uh, uh, perestroika times because uh, he thought that uh, he thinking that um, uh, post-modernism is not a modernism at all, and it, and it became something completely different. And it's not about him and his generation and uh, Soviet modernism architecture. But there is another point of view. Uh, also, we agree with this, that it ended in 1991 with uh, collapse of uh, the Soviet Union. And uh, this is much more popular historical points, 1955-1991. So this is cover of our book uh, together with Evgenia Gubkina. Uh, I will tell uh, more a little bit later. And uh, also this period was uh, manifested uh, during uh, the most uh, important of first uh, meetings, uh, European uh, and maybe even worldwide uh, meetings uh, about uh, heritage of this architecture that took part in Vienna in 2013. And it was, uh, Felix Novikov was one of the members uh, of uh, uh, this happening and he called it like the last meeting of Soviet uh, architects. So he was also part of uh, this project uh, and curator team and he invited uh, all uh, Soviet architects uh, that were still alive, and he knows. Uh, and uh, there was uh, from Ukraine my friend uh, Sasha Burlaka and Alexey Radinsky. Uh, uh, Alexey Radinsky, he is a film director, and at the end uh, of uh, my lecture, I will show you uh, last uh, one of his last uh, films about this architecture and one of the architects. So this is was important uh, happening because uh, it was uh, like uh, manifesting uh, the topic and uh, showing uh, world uh, architectural society that this architecture is very interesting and that it is because it was not well known abroad and even among uh, Ukrainian and other architects from other post-Soviet republics they. Uh, they didn't uh, see uh, you know, the beauty, attraction uh, of this architecture because most of these architects that were making projects uh, of this period, who were authors of this period, after uh, getting independence of Ukraine, for example, they uh, forgot everything they do before and tried to make new architecture of the 90s. And I think you know the quality of this architecture, and it's called nowadays uh, like capitalistic romantism. Uh, it's another topic. Uh, on the third lecture, we will talk about it. So this is Felix Novikov um, during our Skype meeting. Uh, so he's uh, in good condition. He lives in USA, uh, and he also publishing uh, books uh, about this architecture. Uh, some kind of memories, some kind of research, uh, some kind of history of architecture of this period, uh, uh, but it's uh, quite uh, a wide open person. And uh, we had uh, some interviews with him, asking him about his friends from Ukrainian Republic, also about Ava Milevsky, who was like uh, the same as Felix Novikov in Moscow. He was star architect in Kiev. So another uh, important uh, research project of this period uh, was even like extended uh, extension of the project in Vienna, uh, because uh, this one was called Trespassing Modernities, and it was uh, created by Georg Scholhammer and Ruben Arafshitian, uh, who were also part of the team uh, in uh, Vienna. And this project uh, was focusing on uh, finding some 
um, some differences between architecture of each republic and to find these natu national uh, aspects of uh, architecture. And this project was uh, uh, presented uh, in uh, Istanbul and later during Biennale in San Paulo. And uh, last two years, during the last two years, another extension of this project is called The City of Tomorrow, and it is a traveling exhibition. It is also curated by Georg Scholhammer and Ruben Ravshitian. And it's a traveling exhibition uh, across all, not all, but uh, some uh, post-Soviet uh, countries. And uh, we also help him, uh, them with uh, its uh, exhibition in Kyiv. But unfortunately, it was uh, stopped uh, first time because of COVID uh, and nowadays because of uh, the war. Uh, but we are always in contact uh, with Georg and Ruben and uh, always um, giving them all information about Ukrainian architecture. And this exhibition, uh, I think, is uh, very important uh, because um, the architecture of exhibition consists of several stations and each station is dedicated to some topics that uh, shows uh, this architecture in different ways. For example, industrialization of uh, space and housing. Uh, so it's all about uh, housing blocks and so on. Uh, architecture in industry, architecture of new way of life, uh, arts and culture, leisure and free time. Uh, Soviet Orientalism is also about national traditions in this architecture. Parallel ideology, organization of everyday life, science and technology. And on each station you see a new reflection on this architecture. And it's also uh, not just like architectural research, but also like creator research. And uh, I hope uh, this lecture will be in Kyiv maybe in another uh, you know, version, but it, uh, it will be very interesting. Uh, one more um, project book uh, that popularized uh, this architecture was a book published in Tashen by French photographer Frédéric Chauvin. Uh, it became bestseller, and it's called Cosmic Communism Construction Photographer. Uh, it was very popular, and interesting that is that um, uh, Chabin uh, filming, uh, making photos uh, of this architecture during 10 years, and he started at the beginning of 2000, so we can see uh, projects on his photos, buildings and structures, in a condition uh, that is uh, like more natural condition for this architecture because during last years a lot of these projects and buildings and structures are renovated without any control and without uh, any, I don't know, feeling uh, and worrying about this architecture. Shaben is also our friend uh, and we had interview with him and it's uh, rather interesting uh, because, uh, for example, uh, during our meeting, uh, we get from him information that he was shooting only on film cameras. It's also uh, making a special vision uh, of this architecture in a book exactly. And uh, some of his cameras he bought uh, during his traveling in uh, old uh, Soviet uh, photographers. Uh, and he's still interested in this uh, architecture, but uh, he decided for himself uh, that uh, with this book he finished uh, this topic. Uh, and uh, I, as I know, they republished it in a small scale. So, uh, before I started a new part, I want to show you a famous uh, uh, cartoon from Soviet period that shows uh, that uh, uh, that shows like the world wide opinion on this architecture of this period that it was more about uh, residential blocks. This cartoon is uh, 
uh, well known because it is uh, in the beginning of uh, one of the most famous films of the Soviet period that was uh, showing uh, every New Year party. It's called like in Russian Slyokim Param and it's also about uh, residential block housing when one man hero he drank and uh, his friends put him on an airplane uh, to the Leningrad from Moscow and he entered uh, not his own flat but uh, it was the same one as it was in Moscow so it was about multiplying these blocks let's see So uh, it's uh, true that we see in this cartoon, uh, but uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, there was um, an another kind of architecture that uh, architects want to build. Uh, and it was uh, not uh, mass housing architecture, but uh, architecture of cultural sports, uh, pioneers of Paris, educational and so on projects. So when I started my research, uh, the first uh, point uh, where I can get information was uh, old uh, Soviet uh, magazines uh, that are like two mainly. One is called Architecture of the uh, USSR. Uh, and it was uh, like taking uh, care of uh, the whole territory of uh, Soviet Union. And another was uh, uh, building uh, construction and architecture. Uh, but uh, before uh, Khrushchev's decree, it was called, as you see on the left picture, uh, it was called architecture and construction. But uh, after 55, everything was changed, as I mentioned, and it was renamed in construction and architecture. 
and there was uh, Khrushchev also made a decree of uh, new weekends uh, of new uh, holiday uh, that was uh, holiday of uh, the constructors and builders uh, and also our faculties uh, all are still uh, not faculties but universities where is architectural faculty also named like for example, Kiev University of Construction and Architecture. Uh, so, uh, and it still exists. Uh, and after magazines, um, uh, I was uh, not fond of all information that I uh, get there because it's more, it was more official, you know. So I try uh, to find more books, uh, and uh, there was a lot of interesting books. Uh, uh, some about residential buildings, some kind of different constructions, uh, and there I get more and more information. And then I decided uh, to make friendship with architects that were still alive. And uh, it was the most difficult part of my research, uh, because they were uh, old ones, uh, most of them uh, I think from 75 and older. Uh, these architects that started their projects from 1955, but there were more young people, uh, more young architects uh, that was at that time, uh, for example, 50 uh, or 60 years old. Uh, but uh, the most interesting at that time for me was these older ones, and they were really wondered uh, who I am and what I want from them, because they completely uh, forgot and were happy with this uh, this period, uh, and uh, they really wondered why a young man is so interested in this architecture, and even more, he wants uh, he, them uh, to show him uh, their archives. Uh, because, uh, for example, uh, I have a long uh, friendship uh, with Edward Bilski. He is uh, on the left, on the top of photo. Uh, and when I saw in his studio, in his uh, uh, scientific institute that he, where he was still working, his archive, I was really happy, but it was uh, so mass uh, archive, so I systematized, systematized by myself it, and then uh, he believed me and showed me more. Uh, another uh, way of research was to get information from these scientific uh, institutions that was still exist, but nowadays, unfortunately, even some of them are not. And it was also difficult at that time and nowadays because it's more state uh, institutions and it's really difficult uh, to get contact with them, uh, even don't get an archive, it's like a miracle to get there. And uh, the last one was uh, one of my favorite also, it was uh, like photo books of the Soviet period, where we can see also great pictures uh, of these structures, and it also show us like its natural uh, conditions and materials and even like feeling of society at that time. Of course, it's also some kind of uh, under control of the government, uh, but uh, uh, a lot of pictures are really well done. Something like this. Uh, so uh, I was not alone. Some of my friends, not a lot, but there were uh, still exist. They also try uh, to uh, search this architecture. For example, here you see the project of uh, Sasha Burlaka and Ivan Milnichuk, uh, uh, who were making uh, like uh, art uh, uh, couple <laughs> of architects uh, trying to uh, to deal with this architecture. And here you see. They uh, making the renovation of one of small uh, architectural forms. Here you see on the left photo how it was at that time, and then they make uh, the first map uh, of uh, Soviet modernism architecture in Kiev, and numbered even some uh, monuments uh, of this uh, period listed by themselves. 
Uh, another friend of my, Ilya Danko, he was shooting uh, like Frederick Chopin, uh, all this architecture on film cameras, and it's also pretty one. For example, uh, on the left side is this famous uh, UFO building uh, that is that you can't see nowadays from this uh, view because uh, it's catch by a shopping mall. And on the right side, this is pavilion on our fair exhibition, and it was destroyed completely before uh, the war on the 22nd of February. And this famous project of uh, memory halls and crematorium in uh, Kiev. Another project of Evgenia Gubkina, uh, her city guide of Slavutich. Slavutich uh, uh, is one of the youngest cities, uh, maybe not uh, all over the world, but in Europe for sure. It was built in 1986 for savers of uh, Chernobyl disaster, and it was built during two years. Uh, in collaboration with uh, all uh, Soviet republics. So this city consists of districts that named by uh, this uh, Soviet republics. For example, you can uh, visit the Lithuanian district, Georgian district, Armenian district, and so on. And uh, what interesting to say that uh, during um, five years, uh, there was an uh, urban film festival that was called 86, and it was in Slavutich, and it was very great, I think. Unfortunately, it, uh, uh, the last uh, time it was uh, three years ago, I think. And uh, one of the uh, uh, heroes of the time uh, with whom I also uh, became friends was architectural photographer uh, Alexander Ranchikov who was uh, making photos of these buildings because he was like the main photographer of one of, one of the institutions of that time that was named like Institution of Problems and History of Soviet Architecture and he was shooting a lot and I always uh, use his photos in my projects. Um, they are very professional and uh, I'm very fond of it. I will tell more about uh, my friendship and uh, uh, Alexander Ranchukov, with Alexander Ranchukov and about his photos and books uh, during my next lecture. So when I... Uh, manage all this archive information I wanted to spread for the public and show it more and more. This was uh, one of uh, the one, this was the first uh, exhibition project and it was uh, dedicated to uh, architectural uh, magazine that was called Object. Uh, I worked there uh, like uh, invited journalist and uh, I proposed them uh, to make exhibition and to make uh, a new series of publications about these architects. So this pavilion was made uh, from uh, plastic sheets that uh, in front of it you see the covers of the magazine and inside all uh, archives uh, that I collected uh, and it uh, was represented that we started with this uh, magazine uh, a new publication series uh, and the first publication was about Edward Bilski he was on the cover and he was the hero of the issue and I will tell more about him also during the uh, next lecture, but you see that uh, uh, on this publication I show uh, most of his archive that I collected, uh, put uh, each to each, uh, and, uh, had, uh, and published also a huge interview with him discussing uh, each of his projects, uh, behind stories of these projects uh, and he was very happy of this and after this publication he gave me the telephone number of his friend Tatiana Belayeva. Uh, she uh, is still alive and she's very pretty uh, woman and uh, she uh, was also happy and wonder 
to be published in uh, this magazine. Interesting story is that uh, she uh, gets a uh, medal and uh, her project of Pioneer Palace uh, in Crimea was honored uh, by the main honor of uh, medal of uh, Soviet uh, architecture of Soviet period. And it was uh, really a huge uh, victory for her. Uh, and after this, I published uh, another um, long story about a couple, artistic couple of Ada and Volodya, uh, who were like um, artists, monumental artists, and they were always dealing with architects, and they are authors, co-authors of this, for sure, worldwide known uh, project of Kyiv Crematorium, uh, of this memory halls, and of this uh, memory wall uh, that was later uh, covered uh, with a concrete and uh, like destroyed, demolished uh, this uh, piece of uh, beauty. Uh, you see how it was before it was covered by the concrete. So it was a huge, huge barrelief wall. Uh, they were working together uh, on this wall during uh, 12 years and one day uh, when they entered uh, uh, this place they uh, saw that police uh, and builders were covering uh, their piece of art and uh, they started struggling against this system but uh, unfortunately, uh, it was still uh, covered, not at all. I will show you later. So this is, was a huge, huge project, very interesting uh, and uh, very conceptual. So how this wall was looking before it was covered. And this is memory holes. On the left side, uh, this is pictures of uh, making this wall with this concrete uh, uh, we called it uh, Torkret concrete. I think you have the same. Uh, and this is a uh, process of covering. Uh, first, uh, for first, it was covered with uh, plywood sheets. And then, and see on the up photo, and then it was covered with a concrete. And it uh, uh, was at the same, uh, in the same condition till 2018. So, it, how this memory holds are uh, looking nowadays. This is uh, Vladimir Melnichenko, a uh, portrait of Ilya Danko of him, and here is my photo. So, uh, when I uh, started uh, to find uh, these architects, uh, I always try not to be like a journalist, you know, and it's even not easy to be a journalist with them. You always need to uh, get deeper in contact with them and became friends, drinking tea and spending a lot of time. But during this uh, spending time with them, you get uh, all information you want. And that was never published uh, before. And of course, never was even mentioned uh, in official uh, publication during the Soviet period. And uh, then we decided with Sasha Burlaka and Oleksiy Radinsky to make uh, like a uh, huge uh, uh, exhibition of this architecture that was uh, more about unfinished and unbuilt projects in Kyiv. It was uh, in uh, visual center uh, of culture in Kyiv. Uh, we combined uh, also uh, all archive uh, materials that we collected uh, at that time. It was uh, very popular uh, among uh, people and there was a lot of people and it was, I think, lasted during two or three months. And uh, everybody was really wondered uh, that this architecture was around uh, in Kyiv and uh, also people uh, asking themselves uh, during uh, visiting this exposition that we really don't know nothing about this architecture but uh, visiting uh, you can see a lot of uh, stories and very interesting stories uh, and uh, 
we also uh, shows there uh, some films uh, have some lectures uh, uh, and uh, we were happy at the time this is film about covering this wall uh, unfortunately, I can't uh, get it because the link is closed, but Volodya didn't answer me, but he's still alive also. Another exhibition was uh, about uh, markets, Soviet markets, and it was in one of the most attractive Soviet market in Kyiv that is called Zhitny Marketplace. And uh, during this uh, uh, exhibition, we started uh, to involve in this architecture inside uh, information about this architecture inside this architecture. So, um, interesting story about uh, this kind of uh, structure is that there was uh, uh, a huge uh, project connection between uh, constructors and architects to make these shapes. Uh, with uh, metal cables that could cover uh, a huge squares and you don't need uh, any columns or other construction elements and it was headed by uh, architect Valentin Stolko and even uh, he had a project to cover uh, the whole territory of uh, Latin America with uh, these shapes. Uh, and uh, we show uh, all projects uh, with this kind of structure in Kyiv and not far away from Kyiv, for example, in Cherkasy. Uh, and it all was also one of our steps to, uh, to spread information about this architecture because people uh, inside this marketplace, they were also very wondered uh, that they came there to buy some vegetables and fruits and they see a story and information about this architecture. So we see that uh, it's uh, like open uh, and everybody was happy. And the next uh, step of uh, this uh, connection between architecture and uh, archive material was another marketplace uh, uh, that I've made uh, during Art Week Kiev Art Week, uh, and this was uh, rather small, but uh, people were also happy because of this, and uh, even um, they asked me to uh, reprint some photos because, sorry, of blood uh, <laughs> and so on, uh, but uh, it works, you know. And even uh, customers uh, that and people who visit this market, uh, they also happy of this. And another exhibition was also about Edward Bilski uh, and about his main project of residential area Vina Vinagradar. That was um, uh, one of the biggest in Kyiv. And the story is that during uh, this building process, Bilski didn't damage any tree. Uh, he saved every trees he uh, fixed, and that's why when people entered this district, they were happy to live not in a completely new environment, but uh, how it could be in uh, 30 years. You know, because sometimes these residential districts were really built uh, on a sand, I don't know, and it was quite clean with uh, any uh, human connection with nature. And uh, uh, this is Florian Yuryev, uh, uh, the author of uh, the UFO building. And uh, together with him, we started uh, like a new uh, activity that later was called Safe Kiev Modernism. And it was uh, because of our project of saving uh, exactly this building UFO because behind it uh, one of uh, the Kyiv developers started to build uh, uh, a new shopping mall and uh, in his projects we saw that this new shopping mall in some uh, variants was catching UFO uh, in another, it was demolished, uh, so uh, we started our program and bring a lot of people and uh, after this, after Safe Kyiv Modernism, people also 
get more information about the, this architecture and uh, even more young generation, they now trying uh, to find uh, a new story uh, about uh, demolishing another uh, piece of Soviet modernism and make their own activist group uh, to uh, save it. Uh, uh, for example, another uh, story is that is called Kvity Ukraine, Flowers of Ukraine, another building that was under demolition process and young people get it uh, and save this architecture and make uh, a lot of uh, you know, uh, information in, uh, uh, in uh, Instagram, Facebook, in social media and so on. And with Florian Yuriev, uh, uh, we made uh, his uh, huge, huge uh, uh, exhibition, exposition of all his uh, artistic life because he was not only an architect, he was also an artist, and he was also a violin master uh, who made uh, like a new construction of violins because he was an architect and constructor. So uh, he invented a small detail that works good. Uh, and he also uh, was, uh, he managed his own language of a color uh, because inside this UFO, when he was uh, making this projects in a uh, project in sixties, uh, he was dreaming to make inside uh, this shape uh, a theater of a color. And you should visit this performance without any sound. Uh, you should see uh, a sequence, a number of colors, and uh, you will hear the sound inside your brain. So it's like the language of a color. Uh, and we call it Modus Coloris Synthesis. It's like uh, one of his projects was named the same. And you see uh, bright colors. He, was, uh, he died, unfortunately, uh, half a year ago at the age of 92. Uh, and we help him uh, a lot, uh, and uh, this kind of art he called modus. Uh, so it's like a symbol, and you can read uh, in one picture the whole story, like storytelling in different symbols. And here is his violence, made by him own, and uh, during the last three years he made, uh, I think, three or four violence and uh, I even help him somehow uh, to glue some details of this violence uh, um, violin sorry and uh, another um, part of this exhibition was about his architectural projects uh, about UFO and unbuilt projects uh, here is the model that he made by his own uh, and uh, this project was unbuilt and uh, after this we made uh, several more activities this is my work uh, of UFO uh, with also it's like modus uh, on the horizontal part you see artistic uh, works of Florian Yuriev and on the vertical part you see the story of safe Kiev modernism and it was uh, uh, I made this project uh, during the exhibition in Warsaw uh, that was called Neighborhoods uh, uh, and it was uh, uh, a big pro project between Polish and Ukrainian artists. And there is uh, a film that we will see at the end of my lecture and together with Florian and other guys uh, like um, Slava Balbek who is interior designer based in Kyiv, well known over the world. Uh, we made uh, our own project of renovation of UFO and presented to this developer to show him how it could be. Uh, and we made this project together with Florian. You can also uh, look for this project and download it. It's uh, following the link Safe Kiev Modernism. And there is a page that is called Tarelka. Tarelka is like UFO, we call it Tarelka, like flying saucer. Uh, and uh, we made like architectural projects uh, with all necessary information, with uh, uh, new values, uh, possible activities, uh, renders, uh, and so on. And 
the most important thing is that we made it together with Florian Yuryev and he signed it because it's very important because nowadays even young architects they want to take part also in preserving Soviet uh, modernism and they're doing by their own but uh, Florian told us also like the story of the building and construction process uh, and his view on some details and for example uh, we try to render uh, together with him how it was uh, when he uh, started this project how it was look like at that time uh, even color of the seats and how it should be during the performance of color theater um, and outside, uh, nowadays, uh, uh, shopping mall is uh, completely built up. It's, um, but uh, we don't know at the end uh, what will be. Uh, because uh, uh, this developer, uh, you will see in a film, uh, we presented him project and he said, oh, you're my teacher, oh, you are so great, I will do everything you want, uh, everything you made in this project, okay, okay, but uh, the building process is still going on and the shopping mall is going up and up uh, and it's like monster that catching not only the UFO building but the whole territory. It's also a disaster because nearby the shopping mall is another shopping mall also of this developer and there is no cultural uh, activities there even sports i don't know uh, so uh, we'll see uh, at the end of my lecture film that will tell you more and another project that i've made uh, for tv center it's also uh, uh, making uh, i was trying to make another modus like florian yuriev that is uh, telling story about this building because this building is uh, situated not far away from babi yar if you know the story of babi yar of uh, jewish uh, cemetery and uh, they always trying to make uh, like uh, a new story of this building uh, and i uh, make them uh, this small presentation, the small concept. Uh, uh, but this uh, building is too much uh, square meters and it never works at all. Uh, but nowadays Ukraine is very popular as uh, a venue of filmmaking and music clips making and a lot of uh, production studios uh, all across the world are entering Kyiv to make this video shooting, so they want to bring them inside one, uh, inside this building, all productions. Uh, and what has happened nowadays uh, with uh, Soviet modernism? Uh, Ada and Volodya, who were the authors of uh, uh, this uh, wall, uh, they, uh, unfortunately, Ada died uh, in 2009, I think, uh, uh, but Volodya is still alive, he's also 92, and he opened his foundation, and people uh, were very fond of him uh, and helped him a lot. Now you can visit his studio, like, uh, it's not even a studio, it's like a small house in the center of Kyiv, with studio, with kitchen, uh, with uh, courtyard, uh, with sculptures, with all archives, and people uh, uh, manage uh, necessary money to open up uh, this uh, concrete uh, shape uh, of the sculpture. Now you see how it looks like nowadays. Uh, at the, uh, you see this element. Nowadays it's only this element um, we can see like original one, but they also plans at that day to make it careful. We don't know what will happen, uh, but we can see how it was, and it's uh, already great, I think. And uh, Soviet modernism became too much popular, too much pop up. That I uh, even want to hide somewhere from uh, this 
story because uh, it's everywhere uh, and um, you can see clothes, postcards, so on, so on. And uh, for example, this advertising of Carhartt. Uh, and even you can uh, celebrate your wedding party inside uh, Zhitni marketplace. It will look like this. Or visit a music concert uh, inside Zhitni market. Uh, this is a um, group um, Short Paris, if you know. So, and uh, a lot of clips, uh, music clips, are filming in Kiev uh, in these venues. That's why uh, I make uh, another of my projects uh, I will show you. Uh, I make a clip uh, from clips that were filmed uh, in uh, one uh, building. It is uh, the main scientific library of uh, Ukraine that is called in the name of uh, Vernadsky. And enjoy. Библиотека имени Вернадского – это самая большая библиотека на территории Украины. построена в период между 75-м и 89-м годом. Это Вернадский, он был философом, общественным деятелем и создал такую науку, как био геохимия, которая, в общем-то, про червей и землю, но в честь него назвали эту библиотеку. Скорода был философом. Лобачевский придумал неевклидовую геометрию. Пушкин и Свеченко были писателями. Менделеев, я не знаю, кто его не знает, великий химик. Библиотека Вернадского, которая является главным научным и информационным центром страны, и я недавно открыл здесь для себя новое помещение. Она раньше была только гуманитарным, а сейчас она и техническая, здесь офигенный свет. Которая является энергосбережением в какой-то степени, и при этом здесь очень классно. И снова несе, пробач мне. Не подскажешь книгу? Nowadays, I think uh, there are more and more clips filmed uh, in this venue, for sure. And uh, 
the last project is our book uh, together with Zhenya uh, that was published in 2019. Uh, we were working on this book during three years. Uh, here am I in Cherkasy bus station. Here is Zhenya in front of cinema in Kharkiv. Uh, so uh, I was uh, traveling uh, all across Ukraine and filming uh, all these structures and buildings uh, and Zhenya was um, she wrote uh, a text it uh, was and I, I think still is uh, the main text from about Ukrainian modernism uh, but we all always was uh, in contact uh, discussing the book uh, discussing what we need to show in it uh, and also how we will name it uh, and so that's why we decided to make it from three like chapters uh, that are also sequence of the history style and we named it modernism brutalism and postmodernism because uh, it's really when you travel all across ukraine you see difference in this architecture uh, and of course uh, this architecture of the modernism it's like about clean forms uh, and transparent glass uh, structures and then during the um, uh, Brezhnev time uh, this architecture became uh, really more uh, more brutal we can say but uh, it's also the question because as we know brutalism it's uh, like beton brute, that it should be made like uh, your faculty, you know, um, texture of concrete and structure of concrete. But uh, during uh, Soviet period, all these brutal forms were made mostly from uh, bricks and covered with a concrete plaster. For example, like this one, it's a library in Sumy. Uh, but in forms, uh, it's really brutal. Uh, and uh, the examples of uh, this architecture uh, are mo more examples of this architecture are in book because it was a uh, more long period and this is uh, Pioneer Palace in uh, Dnipro of course uh, we can name it uh, like modernism clear architecture it was uh, built at the end of the Soviet uh, period in I think in 1990 uh, and um, I was trying to uh, make uh, like passports of each uh, building to show not only exterior but interior, different small forms, uh, product design, because sometimes uh, there was a lot of great examples. And uh, talking about uh, this kind of architecture, we should mention, I should mention that uh, the budget of this project sometimes was huge. And it was an uh, opportunity for architect to make a really something special. For example, to find some artists, like it was in a memory hall with Ada and Volodya, or to manage somehow with some uh, factory to produce some elements, some facade system, or some product design inside interiors. So this is 19th pavilion of our fair exhibition and it is demolished completely, unfortunately. It is another story uh, because um, during last year there was a flea market uh, and they uh, manage money and sell it uh, to different NGO organization uh, to help uh, people, children, uh, pets and so on. Uh, but... Uh, one day uh, we saw a news that uh, pr our president, uh, maybe his office, decided to build uh, a president's university. And they decided to build it exactly uh, on this place. So there was a huge scandal. But unfortunately, the structure didn't exist at all. So this is Crimea. Uh, I traveled uh, in uh, uh, Crimea for two or three times. Uh, until it was uh, possible to enter uh, this territory. But uh, uh, this is also Crimea. I uh, didn't uh, visit Denner and Eleanor. 
but I look uh, deeper in my archives and found some uh, photos that I was shooting before all this uh, all this sad story that happened in 2014 and 15. And this is Crimea. Uh, it's the South Bank of Crimea. Uh, this is uh, Carpathian Mountains, Buvet in Sanatorium. Uh, and uh, we were discussing uh, also uh, with Zhenya uh, how to uh, make this sequence and combining different projects uh, each to each. And unfortunately, uh, the material of photos that uh, is in the book, uh, I think it's maybe 20% of all material that I was shooting. And for example, this one is uh, in Kyiv, uh, and we can't name it like modernism, yeah? It's, of course, it's like about post something, also using of bricks. And this one, so they connected to each other. This is museum. Uh, and this uh, another kind of brutalist uh, architecture. Uh, so uh, this uh, book uh, was uh, became very popular, and uh, nowadays it's sold out. Uh, but you can buy it in a Berlin-based uh, publishing house that is called Dom Publishers, uh, because this uh, project was. Uh, uh, was a connection between our publishing house uh, Asnove and Dom Publishers. Uh, and uh, because it's not easy uh, to get uh, European book market for Ukrainian publishing house, uh, but uh, this architecture is uh, so popular. Uh, and uh, making photos uh, during my trips, uh, one day I try uh, a quadrocopter and drone, uh, and uh, it was uh, like another open window for my self-education of architecture, because till that I never saw uh, this architecture like from the fifth facade, and I was really very happy of it, I can stop flying. Uh, till I damage it for first time. <laughs> and this is our architectural faculty uh, in Kyiv um, uh, from drone. Uh, so this is also some kind of metabolism, postmodernism uh, architecture. This is uh, this Pioneer Palace in Dnipro that I show you before. And also this memory halls. Uh, when I uh, show it to Vladimir Milnichenko, he was also <laughs> wanted as I. Uh, so we see the beauty of uh, this architecture and more and more. So it's really very attractive. Uh, that uh, that, uh, that uh, point of view always uh, managing um, Frederick Chopin because he uh, uh, said, uh, said uh, this architecture attract him by its expressive form. And uh, of course, this uh, one is one of the best. It's Kharkiv uh, Theater of Drama. And uh, there are some examples of uh, these projects that was producing during 20 or 30 years, also this one. But it's very, very huge. It's like city uh, inside city. And nowadays, there are also problems uh, and questions of renovation of this architecture, uh, because uh, nowadays uh, there is no uh, good example how we could do it, uh, because of course, uh, of course, uh, the money uh, budget uh, of renovation of this project is not uh, that it was during the Soviet period, uh, and sometimes uh, we're trying to bring this information, for example, to Taras Shevchenko University, that uh, they won uh, one of grants, uh, and they covered uh, this uh, campus with uh, isolation on the facade, on the stone, and covered then it with a new plaster. 
Oh, uh, and uh, we, uh, but there is not far away from them, uh, there is like a typical uh, plaster of concrete plaster of that period that uh, are also a lot uh, in Czech Republic. And we show them that it would just, just repeat it. But of course, they won't. Uh, and it's also like a, a new project to find all. Uh, elements, uh, not elements, uh, like uh, recipe of uh, this plaster. Uh, so the future of uh, this architecture is uh, under question, uh, but you see that the budget, for example, of this interior of Pioneer Palace is huge, and everything was made uh, like especially for this place. Uh, this one. Uh, this shape uh, with metal cables, uh, another bus station, ceiling lamps, uh, but sometimes people uh, that are directors and headers of, I don't know, uh, for example, this uh, venue that is like a house of culture, they're very fond of this ceiling lamp, for example. They see the beauty of it and they're taking care of it. But the beauty of the whole building or of another part of the interiors, they can understand it. This is from Mariupol, meanwhile. Uh, this is from Lviv. And uh, nowadays, uh, this architecture also became even a symbol of Instagram photos, you know. Uh, a lot of people uh, entering Ukraine during last years, uh, making photos uh, and even asking me and my friends uh, to show them uh, some places and so on and so on. Sometimes I help in for some uh, film productions. Uh, to manage uh, uh, entering some of these buildings uh, because I also uh, have in, uh, city uh, tours uh, of this architecture in Kyiv uh, showing uh, this architecture to students uh, uh, from Europe or where else and uh, showing them also not the exterior, but interior. For example, to enter this scientific library of Vernadsky is not too easy. So this is the end of my lecture, except the last film. Yeah, we'll see it. Thank you. Maybe we can turn off the light and is it not louder sound? It's okay, yeah? Як птиця фенікс Україна відродиться по всій країні. Коли підступна влада грошей, що тільки шахраям хороша, згорить у вогнищі руїни, тоді Усі припинять ствари, і буде суд та Божа кара глобальним ворогам природи, що сварять війнами народи. Что это будет? Торговый центр, вторая очередь. И что? И сколько тут будет этажей? Я не видел окончательного проекта, не могу сказать. Вот Леша говорит, Но это что... они влазят уже на территорию информации. 
Но вот Леша говорил, что они хотят сделать вход в этот торговый центр под тарелкой. Что им нужна ну, как бы территория, чтобы попасть в свой торговый центр. Понятно. Мы тоже воспринимаем как, как целостное, как исторический объект, да, как пример гордости. Что, смотрите, столько лет назад мы уже думали по современному. Э -э, инвестор не готов вообще дискутировать про цвет фасада. Они говорят, что Это уже нет. мы решили, какой цвет фасада будет, и, и все. Дискуссии Они нет. Решили. Но, конечно, что это неправильно. Крайне неправильно, тем более, что это авторское Понимаете, мероприятие. Может быть, стоит... Они говорят, что хотят синий и все. Потому что инвестору, любимый цвет инвестора Понимаете, синий. В этом Поэтому... и беда. Давайте с ним встретимся по-человечески. Этот зал э, я проектировал как цветомузыкальный до того, как появился заказ на Институт информации. Поэтому это была такая совершенно нереальная тема. Строители говорили, что это невозможно построить. Нельзя поставить, она упадет. Тем не менее поставили, и уже 40 лет стоит, и пока еще не падает. Я бы хотел, чтобы здесь восстановили по проекту у нас, вот по проекту у нас здесь зал был оформлен как цветомузыкальный. Ну, может быть, кто-нибудь читал мои работы о цветомузыке. Это был бы, э, пожалуй, первый в истории архитектуры цветомузыкальный зал, как самостоятельный. Наша задача как раз продемонстрировать что этот зал еще живой, что я, как и архитектор еще живой. Значит, можно его спасти. Сзаду будуется, за будівлею будуется еще одна черта Ocean Mall, так? Торговельного центра. Инвестор, который будует этот торговельный центр, зацікавлений в аренде помещений які дозволили б йому включитися в комплекс свого торгівельного центру і одержати вихід на фасад. Можна я одразу питання? Да. Одразу питання виникає, звідки взагалі з'являються ну, архітектурні пропозиції та чи інше. Тому то есть проблема, що є ризики одержати таку картинку. І я бачу ще інші варіанти, це ще не все. Але враховуємо, що інвестор інвестує Близько 150 миллионов гривен в проект. Смотрите, людям заказчика проекта. Расскажите, что такое на Я думаю, что вы сможете задать питание после. Зараз хочу сказать слово про Флориану Вич, пожалуйста. На мой смак, это архитектурное чудовище. Я не хочу в таком проекте принимать участие. Ну, а 
опять же, архитектура отражает общественные отношения. Общественные отношения у нас сейчас хаотичные, так? И этот хаос, он и в архитектуре сказывается, никуда не денешься. Вот самый простой приборчик. Вот смотрите. Вот здесь по 7, ну, 7 цветов, 7 тональностей. Каждая тональность имеет свои цвета. Потом вот этот аккорд. Видите, они холодеют. Музыка без, э, без ритма не существует. Вот, вот это можно считать, что это э, оркестр, а это э, сольный, э, сольная партия, а это связующая. Они начали снимать блоки. Я говорю, зачем вы хотите снимать блоки? Мы их остановим. Почему блоки нужны? Это как раз тот самый ритм, который объединяет всю эту музыкальную композицию. Вот от этого варианта уже открестились, потому что он, видишь, наехал, тут уничтожает. А сейчас они закачали вот этот вариант. Якобы он они тарелку не трогает, но они все равно наезжают. Наезжают и поглощают полностью объект. Вот это участок. Этот вход им нужен как парадный, чтобы использовать бренд тарелки. И, и таким образом. Я предлагаю им сделать другой вход, но с каким-то акцентом. Вот когда они наехали, вот так, это уже рейдерские рейс. А если мы их отодвинем, я предлагаю продлить здесь вот, вот так вот этот корпус. И тогда не нужно будет под тарелку идти, потому что э, градостроительно это сильнее вход, чем этот. Вот такая первая, первая мысль. Реальность нашей страны заставляет людей всегда думать про наибольшее. 
Ну і досвід. Якщо почали щось десь будувати біля державної установи, значить обов'язково вкрадуть приміщення. Якщо зачепили пам'ятку архітектури, обов'язково її зруйнують. Нас зараз цікавить, так. щоб оце все було збережене, було так. безпечне. Головне, що це е, неприкасаємо і завдяку. Так. Я е, наполягав і зараз наполягаю, що архітектура – це теж музика. Бо е, от вони в своєму проєкті вбрали оцей ритм. Це не можна робити. Чому? Який ритм? Тому що ритм – це основа музики. Зумієте? Так само і об'єкти, які вони планують, вони повинні теж бути в гармонійному якомусь стані, бо це город. Через місяць орієнтовно зустрінемося, і ви презентуєте це архітектурне рішення, яке покаже, як в загальному буде виглядати цей комплекс в цілому. Процес проєктування – це інтимний процес, тому потрібен час для того, щоб врахувати усі протипожежні норми. Так що я вважаю, що зі скрипками я все зробив, я закінчив. Буде ще одна скрипка, не буде одна скрипка, навіть якщо була б, все одно я це закінчив. Вот. А от в архітектурі, бачите, вони уничтожать тарілку. Мене вбеждають, що я повинен завтра вмереть, я кажу, ребята, я ще не готовий. У мене автобіографія не закінчена. І багато таких хвостів, які треба закінчити. Ось зараз сесть і закінчити, щоб ніхто не мішав. Закінчити. Тобто я повинен закінчити свою життя. А що буде з нею, з моїми роботами потім? Я звиняюся. Тарелка функціонувала, да, нормально да, функціонувала. Да, okay. Зібрали журналісти, я виступив, і всі були довольні. Але був недоволен якраз. Забудовник був недоволен. І він прислав бригаду, і всі ці кресла вирвали з м'ясом. Вони нікому не мішали. Для чого? Для того, щоб там люди не збиралися. Mm -hmm. Вы ведущий, да? Так. Так, какая у нас повестка сегодня? Способно ремонту примещений, которые находятся за адресом Автономича 170. В народе их называют тарелка. Это ваше детище, я так понимаю. А нам обещали в прошлый раз, да. что принесут проект. Свечай. И его пять лет этого проекта. Значит, у нас бессмысленные разговоры. Мы уже все обговаривали сто раз и с журналистами, всю проблему обговаривали. Мы говорим о том, что весь процесс, он, он делается кулуарно. 
О, окей, можно, чому можно всі я... ремонтні роботи в тарілці проводяться да. без участі у робочій групі автора цієї будівлі? У вас є квартира? Ну, квартира, будинок виживати десь чи помешкання? От ви там робили ремонт, ви автора проєкту дали до себе, щоб ви робили ремонт цієї квартири? Розумієте, ми вже рік тавчимо в ступі в воду. Цілий рік. А тим часом тарілка розрушається. Мене дуже цікавить, як вони будуть використовувати саму тарілку. Дочі вони не дають мені креслення, я архітектор, мені слова нічого не значать. Дайте мені креслення, я побачу, як вони хочуть використати. Як можна було наукову сферу об'єднати з торгівельною, я не знаю. Що каже Вадів? Вадів каже, да що ви, звичайна краска, давайте я вам позолочу. Я кажу, не треба нам нічого золотити. Це не церква. Це... Вагів, Вагів, це, це той, від кого залежить все фінансування. Эта картина и, и, и вот эти стихи uh – -huh. это отрицание, собственно, пути капитализма. И, и это многим сейчас понятно и, и приемлемо для многих, потому что путь капитализма пройденный, а мы возвращаемся как бы в истории назад. Uh -huh. Так вот. Сейчас волонтаризм денег. У кого больше денег, тот и пан. Мы идем вперед или назад? Я считаю, что мы идем назад. Все-таки. Алиев кто? Ну, архитектор? Нет. Но он делает, что хочет. А вот у меня есть деньги, я хочу, я позолочу. И если он, если он захочет, он позолотит. И я ничего не сделаю. И никто ничего не сделает. Вы понимаете? А это бред полный. Хамініться недолюди, діти й уродові, подивіться на рай тихий, на свою країну, полюбіть щирим серцем велику руїну, розкуйтеся, братайтеся. That's all. Maybe you have uh, some questions. No?
thank you everybody that we don't care. Am I speaking loud enough for you to hear? Yeah, yeah. Um, you mentioned about uh, the restoration of all the buildings with originally some, some sort of concrete plaster was out being replaced with another kind of plaster. So we think, is that uh, only a question of budget or people just trying to eliminate this concrete box kind of look that everyone allegedly hates and wants to avoid. And another question is uh, also regarding something you said that there is no example of a good restoration of some hyper-modernist or a post-modernist building in Ukraine. So I assume that you have some sort of like beef with the restoration of uh, mainly bus terminal in Kiev now. What, what do you think about that? Because two questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, I'm thinking that uh, the question of restoration is open uh, because uh, really we don't have, uh, I think, good examples as a restoration and also this uh, kind of uh, restoration projects also needs uh, uh, a lot of scientific research and knowing even uh, the producing of that materials. But it's also could be like uh, experimental uh, restoration project because I don't know uh, any examples uh, where it was happened already and also always is the question what we should restore or what we should uh, leave as it is and just preserve it. It also consists, for example, mosaics. Uh, and another venue in Kyiv is a river port building and there are one of the greatest examples of Soviet Ukrainian mosaics and they are damaged a lot and this is the question Sh should we uh, renovate it as it was uh, when it was uh, made or should we leave it as it is uh, and uh, uh, I think it's interesting project for uh, restoration and architects that uh, could do this work. Uh, but uh, also question is, for example, if we're talking about modernism architecture. Modernism architecture, it was flexible uh, in its idea of always modernization. Yeah, Also, these residential blocks, they should be removed uh, and it was temporary uh, place for living. Uh, so maybe we can, uh, I don't know, somehow uh, make uh, another value of uh, this architecture, not restore it exactly as it was when it was built. But it, uh, it, it's necessary to discuss this uh, question and these problems. Unfortunately, it doesn't happen. Uh, and about the bus station, I'm not fond of it. I think it's generic uh, restoration. Uh, yes, uh, the mosaics, uh, if you know, in the uh, uh, central bus station in Kyiv, there are one of the first examples of Soviet uh, Ukrainian mosaics that were made also by this couple of artists, Volodya and Ada, who are the authors of Kyiv Crematorium and this concrete wall. Uh, and it was uh, the first project of uh, their teamwork uh, with uh, our Miletsky and also this bus station is the first example of uh, ready-made uh, Soviet modernism architecture in Kyiv. Uh, yeah, and during a uh, few years uh, this mosaics was uh, restored completely as uh, they were when they were made and it was also made under control of Volodya with uh, a lot of people who help uh, everybody. It was a good example of connection between people to uh, make uh, Kyiv much more beauty and to save this uh, kind of art. But uh, this bus station is not only about mosaics. It's also about architecture. Uh, but the, uh, the quality and even the style of this interior design, uh, I think that it uh, could be, uh, I don't know, coffee shop somewhere else or whatever. It could be bus station somewhere in the middle of Ukraine in the village. <coughs> and uh, uh, as I know uh, the story of this building, 
so, uh, and uh, we know that uh, these first examples of modernism, they were like glass houses, yeah? So, uh, for this, you could see these mosaics that are inside, for example, at the evening time, uh, when the light uh, is turning on, yeah, so it's like also like exhibition of the interior design, and also, for example, all uh, all the structure of the windows was made from we call it anadirium uh, aluminium. It's like yellow. I think you have also the same kind of uh, aluminium. So it was like a, a gold shining uh, metal. And it also attracts, it uh, makes the feeling of happiness. Uh, but nowadays uh, they uh, make, uh, they covered it with um, another, how it's called, panels, materials. They make uh, like smart columns. Uh, they are black. I don't know why. Uh, and uh, also, the whole interior is not made uh, in terms of that time. It's made like, uh, I don't know, white walls, white cube, uh, with some cheap materials, uh, tiles on the floor. But it's also interesting, I think, to uh, rethink uh, interior design of that period. Uh, meanwhile, it's very popular nowadays uh, everywhere. And, uh, for example, even uh, Czechoslovak's furniture is uh, very popular even in Ukraine. And uh, I have some friends and some Instagram accounts where you can buy chairs, sofas, tables and so on for big price. And it's in uh, great conditions. And all hipsters, uh, cafes uh, and so on is fulfilled of this uh, uh, kind of furniture, tiles, uh, I don't know, everything. Uh, but it was made generic in my way of thinking, unfortunately. Uh, but everybody is happy because they saved the mosaics. Okay, uh, let's... <laughs> mosaics is saved, it's already done. And another story is that when this project was built, it was on a huge flat square. Nowadays, it is surrounded uh, by the Autobahn, uh, McDonald's, and so on and so on. So it, it loses uh, its beauty in architectural way also. And talking about preserving some uh, architecture, for example, this UFO building, we were trying to list it uh, during two years making all signs, uh, all documents uh, to this Department of Ministry of Culture. And nothing happened. Uh, but one day, uh, we, see, uh, we saw in the morning post uh, of our Ministry of Culture in front of UFO uh, with a sign that today I signed the document that UFO is listed as the Monument of uh, Culture and History. So you see that it could be done only by one sign uh, without any uh, discussions and so on. So this is uh, the question. Of course it's good. But also the question is um, what this status of listed monument brings uh, to this building. Because uh, it gives you uh, the rules uh, that you should follow to control uh, the quality and uh, all existence, uh, in essence, of this building. That's why, uh, I don't know, people who are heading uh, uh, some institutions inside these buildings are not willing uh, to sign this document and to bring these uh, structures and buildings some uh, listed uh, features, uh, because nobody wants to take care of it. It's better to uh, sold it uh, and to make some business with it. And even if you are listed, it's not for sure that it would be preserved also. We have another examples. For example, Pioneer Palace was first listed monument uh, of this period, and uh, during the early 2000s, they cut off uh, 
the most attractive part of it and build uh, a new one. Uh, so it doesn't matter for developers. We'll see what will happen to, in the uh, future. But there are good examples that I show. For example, uh, this story with uh, wall uh, on Kyiv crematorium. Uh, it's uh, really a perfect story because um, during the independence time, the first, dec the first decree of Ministry of Culture of independent Ukraine was to cover, uh, to take off this concrete from this wall. And nothing happened during 27 years. But nowadays we see uh, how it was before it was covered. And uh, it because of uh, this uh, tension to, to this architecture and maybe also because of our activity and not uh, only ours, uh, of friend of mine, but also a lot of young people that I also mentioned because they try to save a uh, city uh, and they see the beauty of this architecture because unfortunately during 19th and uh, to southerns, uh, all architecture is not attractive for them, like uh, members of the city. And nowadays what we see is only a uh, building process of residential new uh, districts uh, that are not uh, nine uh, stories, or even 16, they are 25 and more, and they are built uh, on the territory of different parks uh, and playgrounds and so on. But the, uh, some examples of this architecture uh, is attractive for young generation uh, because of its uh, expressive architecture and maybe also because of its scale uh, and maybe because of time, uh, because time shadows everything. Thank you. See you next Monday. It will be a more interesting lecture about heroes uh, and architects uh, that uh, I've mentioned today. And I will tell more about each of them and uh, of their biography and of their projects. See you.